Hello guys, I'm Sarfancy and welcome in this tutorial where I will show you how to create super simple platformer game for any phone you desire, Android, iPhone, doesn't matter. Behind me you can already see how it will look like, so let's not waste your time and get to it. Alright, so first of all we will have to create new project, so let's launch the engine. We want to create new game and that game should be side scroller right here, click on next and let's change maximum quality to scalable 2D F3D because we are making mobile game and for the same reason switch desktop and console to mobile and tablet and we also don't want any starter content. Let's rename the project to something like simple mobile game. Alright and now make sure that you press the like button and then create the project. You have already plenty of stuff to do but first of all we will have to change something. Click on edit project setting and we will need to find use mouse for touch which is right here and enable it. Now if you click on play you should have here same control mechanics as you have on your phone which means that you can use joystick for moving left and right by tap the character will jump. That's cool but another thing we need to do is to move the camera away because look at that the only thing I can see is my character. Let's click on your character and edit side scroll character right here in this world outliner. And we have here some blueprints to set up movement. We can ignore that, click on viewport where you can see your character and even your camera, look at that. But here you don't want to move your camera, you want to click on spring arm and set it up here. Right here you can see the target arm length is set to 500. Let's set it to 1000. That's twice as much space as it was before. And it already looks pretty well. Alright, and now if you have your phone connected, you can already launch it and play in there. You can see it. I have my phone connected here, so I can launch it here and package it all, etc. But first of all, let's add here a few more stuff. For example, some kind of enemy. So we'll right click in content and let's create here a new blueprint and just an actor. Let's call it enemy underscore 01. Then double click on it and first of all in viewport we will make it look like something that can kill you. So let's add here cube. This time around let's unlock this lock and set x to 0.5, y to 0.5 and let's set z to 1.2. So now you can take it and put it in your game. It actually won't do anything, but at least you have here something to look at. All right, now let's make sure that it actually does something. So click on add component and put here arrow. Let's rename it to position start. Then duplicate it and call it position end. So here in construction script, let's take both of these arrows and put them here. Simply move it from components and click on get. And what we will do is to take it from this position start and set the relative location. All right, connect it and make sure that you convert it to variable. So promote to variable. And that variable should be called position start. And just to make sure that it's different than name of this arrow, let's call it position start underscore location. And we need to do the same thing for our position end. So you can select everything, control C, control V, put it right here. And just delete this position start and start location, connect our target to position end. And again, promote new location to another variable. And let's call it position end underscore lock. Now pretty important thing with this position start and end you need to make sure that you click on this eye so it's accessible from other part of the engine. Now if you click on your character you can change start and end location of these arrows and move them wherever you need. It will come real handy after a while. So first of all let's make sure that you click on our character and copy his X location because we need to make sure they are on the same location paste it in here. So we will take this cube and use component move to click enter and connect it after this event begin play. Now what you want to do is to click on this over time and again promote it to variable, call it travel time, make sure that you compile and then set it by default on one and make sure that you convert it to public variable as well. Now you also need to get that relative location and for that we will use our position start. So let's get its relative location, get relative location and connect it right here. All right, great. And after all this will happen, what you simply will do is take Ctrl C 
and control V, paste it right here. And you, and you need to change position start to position end. All right, connect after completed to move. And, like, and after completed the second move to component, let's connect it back to first move to component. Now let's see what it does. I can click on play and you can see that my enemy is moving between those two arrows that I have created before. If I click on that enemy again and move our position and location to much further, let's go to somewhere here. You can see that he will try to run super fast to catch it. If you think that it's too fast, you can simply adjust travel time. Let's set it to two seconds and it should move much slower. All right, but that wouldn't be everything because now we also need to set it up so it can kill you. Again, open enemy. And what we will do here is to add here another component. This time around it should be cube. Call it blade and scale it so it actually looks like super weird blade. Alright, once you have it, let's go back into event graph and we will use event tick, which is generally very expensive, so don't use it too often, but this time around it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Click on blade and we will add world rotation. Connect it into event tick and let's set it to something pretty slow, let's say 10 on Y axis and uh, let's see what it does if I click on play and I have definitely not chosen the right axis. So first of all you need to connect it to cube so it travels with it and second of all you cannot use Y axis but probably Z axis. Now you can see that it looks like it's rotating and it can even kill you. Well not yet but we will set it up right now. We will need to add another component that component will be collision box collision and let's scale it all up so it covers this whole blade. So now if you have this you can scroll right here and click on on component begin overlap. After that you need to call to your character to say hey dude I wanna kill you. So take it from execution pin and cast to side scroller character. Connect it into a character and now we will actually set it up in our character. So let's open it side scroll character we will right click here and create here custom event and let's call it just that that's appropriate name first of all let's disable movement so our character cannot move anymore after that let's make sure that we give that a short delay that means it will wait for 0.2 seconds and after that we will get current level name which is name of our current level and open another one, so open level. So this is simple. This is actually a simple method to restart your game. Let's also set it up in our enemy. So click on enemy 01 and from our cast, we will need to get that custom event. So that and let's see if it works. Click on play. It will move towards us, stop us and then look at that. You can successfully die. Congratulations, guys. All right, and now let me tell you why it was so important to set it up with these arrows. Let's delete these all meshes. We won't need them. Simply take your enemy 01, copy it, control C and paste it right here. You can also scale this one quite a lot. That would be fine. Because right now you can edit each of these instances to whatever you want. So let's say that I will click on this enemy 02 and change position start location to something around here then move position and location to something much further and let's say that i want him to move super fast so let's set it to only one second which is like in a human speed let's be real and slow this one down so if i click on it i will change it to three seconds and you can see the changes i commit to one are ineffective in other one so now if i will move somewhere here you can see that this Beyblade is just... That one will be probably pretty high to even wait, so make sure that you slow it down. Alright, so now we can move around and also have here some enemy that can kill us. So one more thing, let's add here also some platforms that can move towards them. And you can you already actually know how to set it up, it's semi, same code as with enemy. So let's duplicate it, call it platform. 
And what you want to do is to delete collision and blade, delete event tick and also delete this collision. Let's also rescale it all so it looks like a real platform. Let's say that I don't want here this, I want to have here a platform, move it here. Again you need to make sure it's on the same X location, so copy control X location and paste it here. And you can do the same thing as you did with your enemy. Let's just move these arrows. And you can of course do the same thing again, control C, control V and put it right here. And simply don't use Z axis when you are moving your arrows and let's use Y axis and let it travel in between. Right now you can see that we have here platforms, we have here enemies, we have pretty much everything you need for your platformer game. You can also restart it if you die, so let's work on that restarting. Right click and let's create here a new user interface and it should be widget interface. Uh, let's call it dead screen. Open it. And first of all, let's put here text. That text should be, of course, somewhere here. Make sure you click on these anchor points and put it on the center. Then click on this text and change it to press the like button. Alright, that would be fine. And let's scale it all up. Font setting and say our size should be about 40, maybe 60. Team. up to you, you can of course import in Unreal your own fonts, that's up to you. Put it around here and let's also add here a restart. So put here a button, scale it up, wait up, somewhere around here and again make sure that anchor points is on center. Then put text in that button, that text should be restart. And again let's scale it up a bit to about 35. Click on that button, scroll down and we'll click on on clicked. For it to change we will have to, first of all let's go into our side scroll character and disconnect this. We can take this setting for a starting, control C, go back in that screen and press here control V and set it up right here. Alright, cool. So after you press that button it will restart the game. But we also need to set it up so it will actually show it to us. So after our death and after disabling movement we will create widget. That widget will be of course our death screen. And let's set it to add to viewport. Alright. And let's click on play and see if it works. Let yourself be killed. And it's right here. You have to click here and click on restart and restart will restart the game, congratulations guys. You should of course make your game much more fancy and much more better looking but I believe that to you, I believe that you are a wonderful designer. And we need to do the last two things and first is to collect coins. So first of all, so create your blueprint class, actor, call it coin, let's go with sphere, make it a bit more flat like, something like that. Maybe it's a bit too big, if I put it in the game I can see, yeah it's way too big. So let's lock it and make sure that if it's locked you can scale it down to about 0 0.7 on Z axis, other, other axis will just follow. Again of course same X location, that's a bit of a trouble with side scroller games. Get back into your coin and first of all let's make sure that it rotates because rotatings are better, that's what Mario taught you. For that we can just copy it from our enemy. So take your event tick, copy it, coin, event tick, after tick, right here. And you don't want to connect here your blade but your sphere. And let's see if it works. Click on play and it seems to rotate just as you would think. It's a bit too slow, uh, it's a bit too fast, so let's move Z axis to only 5. We will simply put here collision. Let's use sphere collision, make sure that it covers the whole of it, so a bit bigger. And again after on component begin overlap, cast to side scroller character. Connect it to a director. And what we want to do is back in our side scroll character, right click edit side scroll character, we will create new float which will save amount of coins that we have, so add new variable, 
call it coin amount and make sure that variable type is float so compile or you can do actual integer integer will be probably better so back in coin let's get coin amount new variable we have created and simply from here put here plus plus we, we will create increment int which will add one to it right now you can hear play sound play animation whatever you want i will just destroy it because that's what i prefer to do with anything so destroy actor and what we will do here in that screen we will simply add here that information let's add here text call it coin amount coins or just coins and after that add another text right next to our coins and we will simply scroll here down in text bind it so create binding cast to side scroller character connect it right here as object we will get player character and to this value we will simply set up coin amount right put it here compile that should be fine and let's make sure that we have more of them to collect so now i will take these three try to die come on dude and you can see i have here three coins restart it take these three use this oh come on and now let's try to commit suicide come on dude and i have four coins that seems to work it seems like it works and the absolute last thing to do here is to create exit of the level that will continue to next level so let's right click create here blueprint actor call it end level open it let's create here just a huge cube and make it like this so you recognize what it is create collision around it and then click on box on component begin overlap we need to cast to side scroller character connect it to other actor and from there we will open level and name of that level will be variable promote to variable call it level name and make sure that it's public because right now we will have to create new level so right click create here level let's call it new level and put our end level here then take your new level rename it Control c so you have exact name of it and to your level name just paste it so it will load your level right now if i overlap it it will create just this new level and it will be completely empty but it will still do basically what we want for it it did nothing because I didn't follow my own advice and didn't put it on the same X, same X location as our character. So let's do that now. And you can see that it opened completely black screen. That's all right, that's our empty level. If I double click on it, you can save select it. You can see that it's just empty. Well, that's about it. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and you did. Let me know in comments what kind of game you are going to create from this. And if you want, you can join the Discord. There is plenty of smart developers. And every Friday we share each of our projects and comment to each other and kind of help each other out. Didn't want to do that. And that's about it. Surfancy out.